What does it take to get a steam locomotive halfway across the country? 4,000 mile trip, a big truck, big trailer. We're gonna show you how we did it. So hopefully you come along with the ride and see what we did, some great footage, beautiful scenery. And uh, we're gonna show you how we got this locomotive home. So we've been running the flower, flower mill at Liberty Farm since 2017. And Neil wanted to take over the farm. So the flour mill was either gonna to have to grow dramatically or we were gonna to have to add another income stream for Neo to take the farm over and be sustainable here. So what we decided to do, see we all love trains, is add a tourist railroad to the property. So we started looking and shopping and uh, we went to discover live steam and I've called some of my friends that knew about railroads and it's a big community, but yet small, kind of tight knit. My goal when we were looking for a railroad was 15 to two foot was kind of the ideal. The thing I love about a two foot gauge railroad is it's big enough to be real, small enough to be manageable. You ride in the car, not on the car. I flew out to Utah. I looked at a two foot gauge locomotive out there. Um, we just couldn't come together on the price. I went to Indiana. I looked at one down there, that didn't pan out. I thought we had made a deal on one 16 inch gauge in lower Michigan. Make a long story short, it didn't pan out. I was really disappointed. And I guess while this all was going on, you know, I mean, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. If it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. So anyway, uh, make a long story short, everything fell through. The next day, I got on Discover Live Steam to start shopping again and i found a picture of that porter locomotive and uh talked to the guy a little bit and this was his baby and he outright told me he says i will not sell this locomotive to just anyone go I, i'm doing it <laughs> so i feel very honored that he ended up selling it to me So I found this railroad on Discover Live Steam. Um, I can't remember exactly how it worked. If I had to send them an email, they emailed, e they emailed me back. Once we figured out we were all legit, then you get a phone number. I called him, talked to him for a while, um, talked several times, worked it out. Once I got out there, uh, Diz and Vicky, uh, great people, very knowledgeable. Uh, Diz restored this locomotive, took it all down. Uh, had a brand new boiler built for it. That is one of the reasons I lean toward buying this locomotive also. Uh, it's a brand new certified boiler. So how can you pass that up? Um, I know what it takes to have it done because I'm having my Port Huron boiler rebuilt right now and a new boiler. I shouldn't say rebuilt, a new boiler built for my Port Huron. And uh, it's pretty intensive. So this went through a lot of work to have this locomotive restored and kept up and running and uh, he also hand built this entire car. Um, and this is the main car we use on the railroad today. And we do have a couple other cars that we're working on. Make a long story short, again, I flew out to Washington, um, looked at the locomotive, we filled it with water, we went through everything, right from scratch, ground up, put the hand holds in it, I inspected a boiler, we got tons of pictures. Ran the locomotive out there, fell in love with it. We made a gentleman's agreement on the locomotive, I bought it pretty much on the spot the second day I was there, I spent the night out there. Pending it'll pass a Michigan boiler inspection and World War III or something crazy doesn't start, um, I was buying this railroad. I flew home, made arrangements, um, then the fun begins. So after we made the gentleman's agreement, the fun began. How are we gonna get this locomotive home? Um, we got the Kenworth, we knew where we were gonna use that. My little boy over there, is a 1971, it's seen better days. 
I don't mind using it around here. If I blow a tire, not a big deal. We change it, but I didn't want to go halfway across the country uh, with that trailer. So we decided to start shopping, which led us to this brand new 53 foot step deck. At the time, trailer prices were outrageous. So I paid $10,000 more for a brand new trailer than a used 20 year old rusted out trailer. And I am so glad I did. When you're hauling across the country, you don't want to all garbage. So that's how we ended up with the 53 foot step deck. So one of the problems uh, we had to contend with is how do we get a steam locomotive onto a trailer without running cranes? So as you'll see, Diz and Vicky, um, we talked back and forth on the phone a lot. And after I bought this trailer, uh, I simply measured the height, measured the rail uh, when the airbags are dropped. So this will actually lower down a little bit. Um, and then Diz built a loading ramp in Washington, similar to this one. I used dirt, he used railroad ties, it went flawlessly. Um, when I backed my trailer up to his loading dock, we were about this far off, which is nothing because the rails move a little bit. So then I had to build this pit to get the locomotive off of the trailer. And it's really handy because now if I buy other equipment, I throw my rails on the trailer, chain them down. So if there's any other locomotives across the country, we can haul to this railroad. No problem. We'll come and get it. After coordinating a pickup window with Diz, Paul, Neo, and I made preparations to venture out to Bow, Washington to bring the locomotive home. Also, as it would happen, there was another gentleman in Bow, Washington who had purchased a steam tractor from somebody in Escanaba. We agreed to bring the steam tractor with us to Bow for convenience sake. And it was pretty cool that we were able to transport steam equipment both ways on our trip. That being said, on the morning of June 13th, 2022, we checked our bags one last time and hit the open road.
bad sign. That's impressive. <laughs> long drive but we finally made it and after a few days on the road we were ready to take a load off make no mistake though we were all super excited to finally be in the same place after parking the truck and getting acquainted with Diz and Vicky we turned in early that night as there was definitely a lot of work to do the next day and before we could even think about loading up the train we had a tractor to get rid of no worries tractor unloaded, the buyer could now come by later and take it home. Until then, we would be busy getting the train ready. Thankfully, as stated earlier, Diz made all the preparations necessary for us to do this. Now, for those who are interested in Diz's story and the history of this locomotive, we released a video last week that goes into detail on everything we know about it. I'll leave a link in the description. But here's a quick recap from Diz on that subject as we get ready to move the train. My love of trains goes all the way back to when I was just a, a little boy being that I had the trains 
right in front of my yard down there as a child. So any child that usually grows up like that, one in the family is going to take note of all that and it's going to become a hobby or a magazine or something like that in the future. I had to say, we got to do this here at the house. And I always had it in my mind to do it. So we found out that there was little rail available here and there, but it was disappearing as well through the scraps. But we had laid down 2,000 feet of track. And once the track was down, we were making our first crossing up on the neighbor's property. There was a, there was a guy, uh, Bill Krause was his name. He lived in the middle of Oregon, down in, in Eugene. And when Bill come around there that day and seen that, he come up the driveway and, and met me and we talked. And he said he had his little two foot gauge line up and running on his property. And he had found out about a steam locomotive in a five center, five cent nickel one ad saying that there was this locomotive down in Willits or Laytonville, California, that it was available for sale. So when Bill left that day, I could no more be faster on the phone. I called up a guy by the name of uh, John Bradley. He says, yeah, you can come on down anytime you want. Well, the next morning, we were in uh, my brother-in-law's Ford Bronco, and we zoomed. We made it down there. I was, I don't know, it was like 15 hours or something like that. And then, you know, conversing with John on the land and seeing his locomotive, he told us to go around the corner there, and we seen this little locomotive on a piece of track. It was 40 feet long. He said he had it steamed up and he ran it back and forth on there just to test it out that it ran. And that's what he was opting to put up for sale. This is something I kind of dreamt about all my life, you know, that's what kids do, they, you know. But something like things were coming about and becoming real here. But once we got the locomotive housed back in the shop, we didn't have the floor in quite yet but it was in there on track being preserved for what it was. So after an old steam locomotive is pulled out of service, um, most of the time it goes and sits in a scrapyard somewhere and waits to be scrapped. That was a good possibility for this locomotive. Um, some rail enthusiasts decided to grab this. There's a good and bad thing about thieves. I hate to say it. But if that locomotive is gonna be scrapped, oftentimes people go and steal the bell, they steal the whistle, and they go and steal these plaques off of the locomotives. So when Diz acquired the locomotive, he did some research and he made brand new plaques and had them cast and they look very similar to the real thing. I mean, most people wouldn't tell the difference. So Diz, was a little heartbroken because he is a historian on this locomotive like you would not believe. So he started doing some research and calling and looking around. Long story short again, he found one. There was two people, if I recall this right, that were bidding on this plaque or wanted to bid on this plaque. <laughs> Diz ended up with it because I believe one of the guys went to the bathroom and this plaque came up for auction. So anyway, long story short, Diz got the plaque. He didn't know if they were authentic. How, how do you really know? This was one of the side panels that came off the locomotive when Heckle mine uh, converted to, to steam. They put a bigger cab on there. So you see this scratch here at one time? Came right across through here, this plaque. They had put it back on, you can see the holes. So now the plaque comes back into the picture. And lo and behold, one of the plaque has a bunch of scratches on it right here. Diz did not put two and two together for a while. Um, and one day he was thinking about this piece of metal was sitting outside of his barn and he took this plaque. And this is exactly what he did right here. Because he had a hunch. He lined up all the holes and you can see something really wide came across here. And if you follow that across, 
they come right through this plaque. So I could almost guarantee you that that is an original plaque off this locomotive. And uh, being diligent as Diz is, he found both plaques and now we have them. I keep the fake ones on the locomotive because nobody can tell the difference. And the original ones, I keep somewhere else. There's a whole lot more to the steam engine than meets the eye. And I can't thank Diz enough for walking me through that history in our last upload. So if you're interested in knowing more about this awesome machine, go check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. But getting back to the task at hand, we got a train to load. And before we can back up the trailer to the ramp that Diz built, we needed to move the tender first. This will get pulled down into that wood too, it'll make little divots. So that'll help to keep it from rolling.
in a cool box. Vader's gonna look like a steam engine, all the smoke coming out of my ears. Problem is I might drop lower, but what's the worst case is it's gonna drop down a little bit. 
we'll just pull slow. Unless you want to back up on that. Uh... No, we'll see where it's at. Loading the tender and aligning the trailer with the ramp, we moved on to the next phase of loading the train. That being the steam engine itself. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as steaming it up and running the train up the ramp. We were going to have to muscle this thing as far as we could go and connect it to the winch on the trailer. I sadly don't have any footage of the push as, well, I needed to put my camera down to help. But once we moved the locomotive close enough, we could begin the next round of our tug of war. To say it was pretty cool getting to see the train finally rolling up on our trailer this had been multiple years in the making getting to this point but we couldn't celebrate just yet we had one last piece to haul up the trailer before we could go take a breather and just like the steam engine we were gonna have to muscle this car as far as we could before letting the tools do the heavy lifting
Well, it was finally done. We had loaded up the train and everything else we could fit into the car. I remember at this point, nobody could believe we were actually going to be hauling a train across the country. Things were finally coming together for us to start building this dream. We set the brake on the steam engine and stowed away the rest of our tools. I'll never forget how excited each and every one of us were to be a part of this story. It was a little bittersweet for Diz to say goodbye to his old friend, but rest assured, it went to a good home where it is looked after daily. So. Thank you, Diz, for trusting us to carry on the legacy of this amazing machine. For the rest of the day, we took some time to get out of town for a bit. Diz was very gracious and took us out to see some amazing things while we were still in Washington. I think it's safe to say we all made some new friends while we were out there. And we look forward to having Diz and Vicky come out to our neck of the woods to see the train again sometime in the future. On the morning of our departure, Neo and I took a stroll around the property to capture some last minute footage before hitting the road. During our time loading the train and the cars, we didn't really get to take in the scenery or let the amount of work that it took to build the old railroad grade sink in, but I'm glad we both got the chance to take a closer look at what was back there. There were definitely a lot of memories made out here over the years, and we look forward to continuing that venture as we progress on our own railroad. Nonetheless, this is definitely one of the coolest locations I've ever seen for a train to run through. But soon enough, it was time to hit the road again and bring the train home. We took a moment to say our goodbyes and give a few honks to Diz and Vicky as we set out on our return. It goes without saying that thankfully Paul remembered to stop the truck so I could go back with them.
two weeks later, and more than 4,000 miles traveled, we finally brought the 1715 home. We were all pretty worn out by the time we managed to get the trailer parked in the garage, but my goodness, how excited we all were when it finally hit us. We had our very own train. And it also sunk in just how much more work we were going to have to do in order to get this thing running on an active line. And funny enough, there were another few road trips in the near future. We did make a second trip. Um, 8,000 miles. We had to go back and get a speeder and rail and switches and switch stands. So 8,000 miles to get this and the accessories home. We actually bought two private railroads. Stay. Hard to see. So between the two private railroads, 8,000 miles to get this railroad from Bow Hill, Washington, 13,000 miles to get the Northfield and Canyon Valley Railroad from Minnesota. To say this project has been difficult would be a massive understatement. Despite all the work we've put into it so far, we still have a long way to go. But thankfully, the hard part is mostly done now. And we'll be able to maintain and restore all the equipment we've hauled back here to the railway. However, you never know what you're going to find out there, or when you'll find it. Something tells me we're just getting started. Well friends, that's going to bring our video to a close for today. It's kind of hard to talk about this trip without bringing up Neo. We didn't know this was going to be our last trip together, and unfortunately he never did get to run the train on the loop that you see today. But thankfully, he did get to run the train at least once while it was under steam. And I know that wherever he is now, his train is running full steam ahead. We're going to work our butts off as much as we can to get this done as soon as humanly possible because this is a project that deserves to be finished. And to everybody who comes out here and rides the train, we're hoping it's going to put a giant smile on your face because that's exactly what Neil would have wanted. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for watching. This was definitely a long one today and there was a lot of material to go through. But for those who made it all the way through, thank you so much for your time and we hope you enjoyed our story. So until next week... Stay safe out there and stay warm. We will see you then. Take care, everybody.